Welcome to section 7.1, net change and total distance. Today's objective is to use antiderivatives to calculate net change and total distance traveled. Kate is moving along the x-axis with a velocity given by the equation below. We have v of t equals the absolute value of t minus 4 minus 2. When you grab this on your calculator on an interval from 0 to 8, we want to see when Kate is moving to the right, when she's moving to the left, and then when she has stopped. After we do that, we're going to do our new things, which is to determine where she is after 8 seconds have passed and see if we can actually do this and how we would do this. So first, let's do a quick sketch of the graph. Here on the top here, we have an absolute value graph where the vertex is at 4, negative 2. And we're going down. We're going to cross the x-axis at 2. And then we're going to cross the x-axis again at 6. We're going to look something like this. So it says, when is Kate moving to the right? Well, we have two different instances where the velocity, this is our velocity graph, is positive, which means she is moving to the right because she has positive velocity. And that is on the interval 0, 2. Notice so my notation with the closed and open brackets and then union of 6 to 8. She has positive velocity, so she is moving to the right. When she's moving to the left, she has negative velocity, which is from 2 to 6. Then we look at when she has stopped. Well, she stops whenever she changes her velocity, goes from positive to negative. So she stops at t equals 2 and 6. This happens very, very briefly. So suppose Kate starts at the origin. Is it possible for us to determine where she is? Well, we can. We've talked about this earlier. We would find the area under the curve. We'd find our positive areas and our negative areas. And we'd see how far she has traveled. So if we know where she starts at, we can then add that on and see where she ends up. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Net change. To find Kate's displacement, our net change in position, when we ever hear the word displacement, it means where, are we, where do we start from and where do we end up? The change in that is our displacement. We are going to integrate the velocity function over the interval. All right, that's our displacement. To find Kate's ending position, add her displacement to wherever she started from. So if she starts at the origin, you'd add zero. If she starts at like three meters, you'd add three. And then we've talked about this again earlier to find the total distance Kate traveled. We'd integrate the absolute value of her velocity function from zero to eight. We can do this on a calculator. If you're allowed to use a calculator, just use the absolute value bars. Or you have to break up your integration between your positive and negative areas and take the absolute values of your negative areas. All right, so Justin's velocity in meters a second is given by V of t is 96 minus 32t on the interval 0 to 6. First it says, determine when Justin is moving to the left, to the right, and stopped. Well, we can figure out when our velocity is positive and negative. We could do a uh, sketch of the graph again. We can also do this by using a sign chart, finding our zeros. So let's do our practice of finding zeros. We'd say 96 minus 32t is 0. We would have 32t equals 96. And that t is 3. So then we could use our sign chart. I'm going to do this up here. We put 3 in the middle. Put something below it. Put something above it. We plugged in 1. V of 1. We would have a positive. If we put V of 4, we would get a negative. So that means Justin is moving to the left when he has a negative velocity, which is past 3. So our interval is from 3 to 6. And also have the open and then the closed interval there. To the right, he's going to be positive. So from the right, we're going to go from 0 to 3 because we have a positive velocity at that point. And we are stopped when t is 3. All right, to find just the displacement over 0, 6, we start 3 meters to the right of the origin. What is his final position? So we want to find it. How long do you travel? And then we're going to add on where he started from to our displacement. 
We can do this again on a calculator. We could also do it manually. Um, we're going to do it manually because the practice is good to do. So we have 0 to 6. And our velocity function is 96 minus 32t dt. Take the antiderivative. We get 96t minus 16t squared. We evaluate it from 0 to 6. And then we evaluate it. This is 96 times 6 minus 16 times 6 squared. And we'd actually subtract off, we plug 0, we get minus 0. And then when you do this on a calculator, you get 576 minus 576, which is 0. So our displacement is 0 meters. So remember that we have to ask these two questions. Displacement is zero meters. Then it asks, if he starts three, meter, three meters to the right of the origin, what is his final position? That means his final position will be where he started. And his final position is three meters. For this problem, Justin moved, but he came back to where he started from. So his displacement was zero meters, and his final position is three meters. In the last part, it says find the total distance that Justin travels. Well, to do this, we just need to know where his velocity changes. We can break up the uh, integral. We've already done that at the top, where we had t equals 3. So we can break our integrals up. From 0 to 3 is positive, so we're just going to take an integral from 0 to 3. 96 minus 32t dt. And we're going to add the absolute value from 3 to 6 of 96 minus 32t dt. You gotta take that absolute value. And we would do this, we've already done the antiderivative, we already know what it is. We would have 96t minus 16t squared, we evaluate it from 0 to 3, plus the absolute value of 96 t minus 16 t squared evaluated from 3 to 6. Take the absolute value of that. When we do this math and you plug in your values, you're going to find out we get 144 plus 144, which is 288 meters. So his total distance traveled is 288 meters. He basically went 144 meters forward, then 144 meters backwards. And he has a total of 288 meters traveled. The last one we have, it says, from ground level, Will throws his calculator straight into the air with a velocity of 120 feet per second. The acceleration of the calculator due to gravity is negative 32 feet per second squared. What is the calculator's velocity after four seconds? Big thing with this, we need to figure out our velocity function. Well, our velocity function is V of T equals, and we are throwing it at negative 32 feet a second, an initial velocity of 125, 120 feet per second. So we have negative 32 T plus 120. This is my velocity function. So if we want to find the velocity at 4, Seconds, we plug in 4 for t, and we get negative 32 times 4 plus 120. We get 128, negative 128 plus 120. So we get negative 8 feet per second. Next thing it asks is when does it hit the ground? Well, to figure out when it hits the ground, we need to figure out our position. And our position will be, since we're throwing it from the ground up into the air and back down, we're going to find out when it hits the ground by finding the position when it hits the ground. So we need our S of T, our position function. So S of T, going backwards using antiderivatives, is negative 16 T squared plus 120 T. The reason we can do this on this problem is it says we are tossing it from ground level. So our initial position at time T 
of zero is zero feet off the ground. So our initial position is zero, zero. This is why we can do this. If we were told it was thrown from eight feet off the ground, we'd have to add a plus eight at the end of this for our position function. So now we're going to find our zeros of our position function. So now we need to find out when this touches the ground. So we're going to take negative 16 t squared plus 120 t, set it equal to zero. To make this easier to work with, we can factor out a negative eight. This leaves two t, this leaves two t squared minus 15 t equals zero. We can factor out a t and we'll get t times two t minus 15 equals zero. So our t's are at zero and 7.5. So when we toss out the ground at zero, it's at the ground level. When it falls back to the ground at 7.5 seconds, it hits the ground again. So at t equals 7.5, we hit the ground. It says when it hits the ground, what is the net distance it has traveled? So with this, we set up our integral, zero to 7.5 seconds. We take our velocity function, negative 32t plus 120 dt. Notice how I use the parentheses there around the negative 32t plus 120. That is good notation. We take the antiderivative and evaluate. You guys might already know where this is going. We have negative 16t squared plus 120t evaluated from 0 to 7.5. When we plug it in and solve it, we find out that we have traveled 0 feet. Basically, you throw it up in the air, go straight up, come straight down, and lands at your feet where you talked it from. For part D, when it hits the ground, what is the total distance it has traveled? We are going to take, so we set this, negative 32t plus 120 equals zero. We're gonna rearrange this a little bit. We get 32t equals 120. Divide out, and we find out t is 3.75. So at 3.75 seconds is when our velocity is going to change from positive to negative. If we did a sign chart, you would see that. One of those things that's nice with this one, we could do it where since we are starting from the ground level and we're hitting the ground when we're done, you probably recognize this is a quadratic. We have a parabola. So actually we just need to find the area under the first part of our parabola because we have symmetry. So if we looked at this, we'd have something that looks like this. We'd have like 7.5 seconds. It would go up, come back down, and we'd have some symmetry right here. Not the greatest drawing, but the symmetry would be there. So we just find the first part, the 3.75 seconds, and double it. We can find the total distance traveled. I'm gonna do two times the integral from zero to 3.75 of v of t, which is negative 30t plus 120 dt. You could take your antiderivative. You have negative 16t squared. Don't forget the two here, actually. So you have two times negative 16t squared plus 120t evaluated from zero to 3.75. And we would do the math here. And if you find the area of the first part here, if you actually do this, you plug in 3.75 into t, you'd have two times 225. I'm running out of room, so I'm gonna move up to the top. We'd have two times 225, which equals a total distance of 450 feet traveled. And the little slide gets a little messy. But that is the idea with this. One of those things that's nice if you can see symmetry, use it. Um, just make sure if you're using it later on in the AP exam or when you're using it, state that you're symmetric. Since you're symmetric, you can do this. We can find half of it and double it. Um, this is a very useful tool to use later on. All right. So that is 7.1. Today we did a little bit of a review of net change in total distance. We've done total value. 
or total area before and net area. Now we're talking about displacement, position. Um, it's all related together. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.